hey guys welcome back to another behind the edits on my youtube channel when i posted this particular image on my instagram feed i had a lot of questions concerning how it was edited i had a lot of praise people telling me i did a good job and people were wondering if i really did use only dodging and burning for that and i want to clear all these concerns by showing you exactly what i did in this particular edit which i have posted on my instagram so if you haven't seen it it's down there kindly check my instagram don't forget to follow me and double tap on that image so that i will appreciate the fact that you also appreciate the picture right so i have started or should i say i've started i usually do this when i really don't have a lot of content to put out i show you the behind the edits of most of my good edits i have posted on my instagram feed and i did post one i think last week if you're new and you haven't seen that particular video i'm going to link it up here or suggest it down the description tap on it go watch that how i edited that particular image too so i had a lot of good feedback from that particular video and i thought why not do another one where i have actually posted a very good image and people really got interested in that so this particular image i have the behind the scenes of it if you haven't seen it yet i will also link it up here i'll suggest it up here or i'll link it in the description go check out how i used um, a couple of lighting setup which i which i showed you guys with short and broad lighting to achieve most of your interesting poetry sessions in the studio using i think two she tilting her face towards the light this side of her face becomes more broad compared to this side using i think two lights or no it was just one light yeah just one light all right whenever i'm in lightroom here in adobe lightroom photoshop classic cc this is the 2021 version if you haven't if you don't have the 2021 version i'm sure you can follow along with whichever version you have right after 2015. so if you haven't updated your lightroom and you think your machine can't run the latest lightroom kindly update to let's say a higher version from 2015 2016 to like 2018 i think the lowest machine can run the 2018 lightroom all right let's get into it whenever i'm in lightroom i always try or whenever i want to edit here in lightroom i always and i always try and edit using the view where i have my before and my after so that i don't stray away exactly from what i saw when i was shooting right and lightroom this preview comes adobe color which i don't like because that wasn't what i was shooting the picture profile i was shooting in if you want to hear about me talk um on picture profiles let me know that in the description below i think i'll do an extensive video on the different kind of picture profiles and how it affects your picture and how it also doesn't affect your picture so kindly leave your comments down there let me know if you will be interested in this video that obviously i would want to put up so the adobe color preview and this is the camera standard preview with some further adjustments so here in my basic tab i just like to change my picture profile to the profile i shot in which was camera standard i changed the temperature together with the tint made sure my exposure was great this was the exposure before and i like it this way so that i can see some information in the hair a bit of information in the shadows and so forth added a bit of contrast right took away some highlights um opened up the shadows a little bit added some whites and opened up the blacks so if you take a look at the histogram you realize majority of the information is in my blacks and a little in my shadows and so less here in the midtone which is the exposure region so just these adjustments will move the image from what it was to this and the moment you change your picture profile to camera standard you're also introducing more contrast to your image you're introducing more color to your image and that being said i would like to reduce my vibrance and my saturation whenever i change my picture profile if you've watched any of my color grading videos in lightroom whenever i change the picture profile i always reduce either of these two saturation sliders or color sliders i just don't like touching the presence because whatever it is i saw is what i want to see i don't want to add more i don't want to take away unless i had shot this image in a hazy environment or i shot backlit where i know some lights will be spilling through to have my blacks 
looking a bit hazy wear out the haze the image aside from that this is exactly what i did here in the basic tab unfortunately we don't have like a before and after for the basic tab i would have showed you exactly what happened and here in the tone curve let's go to the points curve i did nothing in the points curve did nothing in the parametric curve and nothing in any of the channels available right which um shows you that you can literally do everything here in the basic tab majority of the changes happen here in hsl so i'll toggle between on and off there you have it so with it off you realize after fixing the exposure and everything the image became too bright i was seeing um my image to look very very different uh, i had moved from that reddish tone to this yellowish vibe as a result of me changing my picture profile to camera standard and making those further adjustments so i knew i knew i could come and fix this here in the hsl tab and someone might ask how do you know you have to color grade the image this or you have to make the image look this way that is why i have my before here so that i know where i am coming from i am trying to not deviate from this but try and make this one better and to make this one better you have to deconstruct the image make it worse and build it up and that's why i keep on telling whoever comes to my class or whoever i get to teach that it's a step-by-step -step process where you need to know that whatever adjustments you make here or there will also affect the next step you're going to tackle so in the hsl tab i'll show you exactly what i did i have showed you something about um, the color view i think i would want to explain something so the color wheel right the color wheel here in lightroom you can see red oranges yellows greens aqua blue purple and magenta reds oranges yellows green aqua blue purple and magenta i don't know if i am correct with these two colors all i want you to know is that this what you see here in lightroom is what you're seeing here so it's a continuous form of colors so when i move my reds into my oranges i'm moving it's closer to the yellows i'm also moving it closer to the rm the greens i'm moving it closer to that and when i continue the circle at the long run i end up on the reds that is what you see here so from red which is this ends here at the red which is the tip of the magenta right so from red at the ecc back to red so if i harmonize if i want to harmonize the skin color which the skin color is within these three colors but in lightroom you mostly find them within between these two red and orange colors so if i want to say move a hue of red towards my oranges i am also trying to harmonize the color make make the color look balanced i don't want it to look that i have more reds than oranges or i have more oranges than reds so when i move reds into the oranges i will balance that and move the oranges into the red so that these two colors can look the same when you are affecting your image so here in lightroom when i move the hue of the red towards the orange you see i'm moving the hue of the orange towards the red so forward movement backward movement and here you realize i'm also moving the hue of the yellows towards the orange and that's how you get to harmonize the color since you know the colors that will be affected on the skin you should know which sliders to move to make the color pop out the way you want it to pop out i didn't tackle any other color again except for the blue because i realized it was blue in this shot whenever you shoot black on a gray background or something like that you're always going to have a bit of blue um, present in your image after that i took away most of the saturation of the colors i don't really need in the image i don't mind if it's affecting it or not i just take them away and the ones that are needed which is the red and the oranges i specifically added or reduced some colors from it just because i had changed the luminosity of these colors that i was affected right so whenever you attack the luminosity or the lightness of a particular color you're also either increasing its saturation or reducing its saturation this can be found in lodging and burning which i know i've put a lot of videos on that so 
I'll, I'll, I think in the future, I'll produce more dodging and burning videos, a better understanding of dodging and burning videos, just because I am also learning all the time when it comes to dodging and burning. So yeah, this is what happened here in the HSL tab, changing the image from whatever this was to this, sending it closer or making it better than what you're seeing on the left, but not overexposed when I toggle this off. Here in the color grading session, um, I think I added a bit of greens into the shadows just because greens in blacks work best. And black, in this image, you're seeing I have brown or yeah, a darker shade of brown skin with black. And the only thing that can complement these two colors in the shadows will just be green, the color green. And this image is predominantly more blacks than white so i can say this should i say this is a low key image yes this is a low key image in as much as you're seeing the subject's face it's predominantly blacks than more highlights so adding greens a bit of greens not too much of the greens here in between green and blue so i'll say turquoise into the blacks also gave it a bit of punch and i added some blues into the highlights whenever you're working on a dark melanin skin always make sure that you add some blues to the image because that brings out that dark melanin color you're looking out for so this is the before and this is the after before and after makes the skin look a bit chocolatey which i am looking out for with detail i always take away the sharpening from the image of course i want the image to look as natural as possible already with the dark skin there's a lot of texture on the skin right so if i should undo this you realize it brings out the texture that i don't need i want it as natural as possible i will even reduce this in photoshop just because of the nose heads that are a bit distracting lens correction i think i didn't enable lens correction let's see what it does well it didn't really do anything to the image coming here to camera calibration i didn't do anything here in camera calibration neither in effect so from here i sent it straight into photoshop and this is where everything happened so we have our background image which is this opened in photoshop 2021 try and update your adobe software so it will really help you as a photographer so let's see what happened first thing i tackle whenever i'm in photoshop is i create a new layer and i go about healing in that particular layer so when i toggle it on i make it visible you do realize there are some changes around the nose, on the hair, and when I zoom in, you see more changes. So let's quickly look at the major changes you're seeing. You probably think I had liquefied or had made changes to the nose. No, the changes you're seeing there is all healing, and I'll move into that very soon. I clone stamped the hair so that it could stretch out. I had a friend telling me he thought I was going to make or fill in this side of the image so that it will be all hair no i just wanted it to still look the same way i shot it mostly it's good to the 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 scale to determine whether to make a, a whole lot of drastic changes or less changes depends on how you want the image to look at its preferential and it's more of what you want people to see but don't do something crazy and expect us to believe it's at that i won't accept not that i'm anyone's headmaster but i'm just saying Right, so zooming in, after taking away that sharpness in Lightroom, you realize now we have the skin, right? So let me just toggle off the healing. I took off a lot of these acne over here and these nose heads, right? If, you, if I zoom out, you realize these nose heads are creating a pattern on the nose, which makes the nose stand out the more. But after using my clone stamp too, by picking up the clone stamp, reducing the flow to 23 using my graphics tablet, with the available pen pressure, I took away these nose heads and reduced the texture on the skin. A lot of people use frequency separation for reducing texture on the skin. I don't like using frequency separation. I would like to go through all these processes so that I learn more. The more I do this, the more I better my crafts. So I toggle between on and off and using the clone stamp tool also reduces the amount of light hitting your subject. And with that, I also get to reduce the texture on the subject's skin. I also use the um, healing brush too to also remove some of the textures. I mean, 
some of these blemishes i don't need like these and after i use the clone stamp tool to reduce that texture on the skin and this is what i got right so you might think i had changed the subject's face i would bring back this particular dimension on her nose using dodging and burning when we move forward with the editing after i will always advise if you do your color grading in lightroom and you also want to come and color grade in photoshop make sure you do the color grading before you do the dodging and burning just because the color grading you're about to perform might either affect color lightness and your saturation of your subject skin dodging and burning the more you add light the more you increase your saturation the more you burn or the more you reduce light or the more you introduce darkness the more you reduce your saturation so it might also affect your colors unless you know what you're doing and you can bring back what exactly you've lost and you've gained in editing so after this i tried harmonizing the color which i have showed you before you create a new layer you change the blending mode to normal pick your brush at a flow of five and you sample you hold alt or option on the keyboard but first go to your eye dropper tool make sure your sample size is 11 by 11 average come back to your brush tool hold alt then you sample on the skin right then you use to paint where you feel like you want the colors harmonized i think i did it over the forehead because the forehead was looking quite different from that of her skin just because of the adjustments i did make in lightroom and i also advise if you're shooting a dark skin subject avoid a black on black um color combination it's something i learned the hard way and i wouldn't want anyone to go through that it affected me when i was dodging and burning because um after exporting the image i realized there were some um, problems around the cheek area where the contouring happened so avoid black on black with a dark skin model you can do that with a light skin model but introduce a bit of color it can either be white i i'll advise white right or it can either be skin alone just don't do black on black i don't know why i did it but yeah so the color helped to fix these then i introduced dodging and burning when I open dodging and burning, you realize I have some hue and saturation sliders clipped onto my dodge and my burn. I did mention earlier that with dodge, you're introducing more light. And the more you introduce light onto your skin, you increase the saturation of whatever you're dodging. When you burn, you're reducing the saturation. So with the hue and saturation clipped onto my dodge, I was reducing the saturation of the reds where I have dodged. And with that of the burn, I was increasing the saturation of where I had dodged. And in all, this is, let me zoom out and show you what the dodging and burning did. This is what happened during the dodging and burning. It took me quite some time, but at the end of the day, I got to where I needed to get to. Right. And I did mention I was going to bring back that dimension on her nose. So there you have it before and after before and after so with dodging and burning when done right can make your image look better so for those who thought i used frequency separation no majority of the job was done when i was healing right and right after healing dodging and burning did all the job i needed it to do so my way of dodging and burning kind of confuses a lot of people they always think i'm micro dodging and burning. i'm global dodging and burning but all i have to tell you guys is dodging and burning is dodging and burning but to make you understand dodging and burning, i think i'll make a series of dodging and burning videos if i make that suggestion i think you guys don't need it so let me know down the comment section i actually want you to have a conversation with me down the comment section let me know if you want this kind of videos produced concerning dodging and burning i want to make like four or five videos concerning dodging and burning let's let god help me but so far, if you've liked the video or if you've liked the information I've given you so far, can you leave a like before the video ends or you can finish the video and just leave me a like. All right. Now, this is dodging and burning. After I felt like, like I said, when I said or when I was talking about shooting black on black, I had a lot of problem concerning how the saturation was playing over here and the colors on her skin and all that. I tried using my LUT, it worked, but it didn't work to its highest potential. So the first thing I did, or the first thing I do whenever I want to even color grade, 
in Photoshop is to reduce saturation. So I introduced a black and white layer adjustment using the gradients map. So if I open, you see black and white, reduce the opacity to five, which reduces my saturation on the skin, right? Then I introduced my color lookup table and I matched it only onto her face, which I am still selling by the way. So this color lookup table is still up for sale. I uh, think I'll show it up, then kindly hit me up in my DMs if you're interested in purchasing. And I added some color balance. Let's see what happened here in the color balance. In my highlights, I added some blues. In my shadows, I added some yellows. Midtones, nothing. So in all this, what I did. Then I tried harmonizing the hues on the skin using the hue and saturation layer adjustment. So if I show you, I think it will be in yeah, yellows too. No yellows. Instead of whenever you open your hue and saturation layer adjustment, you see master reds and yellows. But I think after making that particular adjustment in the reds, I ended up changing the name of the reds to the yellows. I didn't change it myself, Photoshop did. So you do see yellows and yellows too. This is the original yellows, which nothing has happened here. Just take a look at the range. Keep an eye on the range. You see that change happening there. So this is a specific part of the skin that I wanted to affect. Right, so let me increase the opacity and show you what I mean. When I move this to the side, you see the selected side. The selected side has the hue change I have made over here, right? The idea is to make sure those parts of the image harmonize with the different colors on the skin. So I would have one harmonized color. After turning it on, I'll make sure I'll harmonize it to the preferred color I wanted. And I think I chose minus eight. Then I reduce the opacity just because it was too much. I'm always reducing opacity. Right after that, I introduced noise to the image. And I think the noise did it all for me because I really didn't reduce opacity this time. So this is before the noise. This is after the addition of the noise, making the image the way I wanted it to look like, more organic, more natural, and also a bit more old. Right. Right after that, I sent it back into Lightroom. And this is the image here in Lightroom. This is the before in Lightroom, right? And I did further adjustment. So the process of editing in Lightroom, sending it to Photoshop and back to Lightroom is what I call dynamic editing, right? If you've heard it anywhere, good for you. If you haven't, this is what we call dynamic editing. You edit with two apps in conjunction, right? So here in the basic tab, I did reduce the saturation just because I felt like some parts of the image had more colors than the other. I reduced the saturation. After reducing the saturation, I want every color to be on the same level. So I increased the vibrance. And that being said, I, I'm, I'm sure I saw this video somewhere. I hope to find a link to that video, which explains what vibrance and saturation means. But if you're so much interested in how I explain vibrance and saturation, also kindly leave a comment down in the comment section below. Let me know exactly what you want to learn concerning vibrance and saturation. The difference between these two, then I promise you, I normally don't like promising, but I promise you I'll make a video on that if you guys leave a comment down in the comment section below and let me know what you think about the differences between vibrance and saturation. Right after that, I went straight into the HSL tab, made a few changes, then I had this particular edit. So let me show you the before and the after, before and the after. So in all, even after Photoshop, I did further adjustment here. Let's see, did I, did I even go into the calibration? Okay, I think I didn't do anything in the calibration. After that, I exported this. I think the last time somebody asked me how I export for Instagram. So I, I, I mentioned the default setting, right? Make sure you have a folder you're exporting it into. Change, change from the quality to limiting of the file size. Mostly, I'm exporting at 1,500 megabytes with a resolution of 300. If I add my watermark, I'll add it. If I want, I won't add it. Then I export. Then whenever I post on Instagram, I post it the way I want it. If I want to crop it too, you can crop it to the Instagram 4x5 and not let Instagram crop it for you. 
then you export then you post so in all this is exactly what i did in photoshop i mean here in lightroom and in photoshop concerning this particular image i have posted on my instagram feed if you love this content i would advise or i would let you know i'll plead yeah pleading is better or well, let me ask you guys kindly do subscribe to my channel which i know i'll be producing more and more content i like the interactions i get from you people when i whenever i post a video on my youtube feed so make make it a point to comment down there anything concerning this particular video and i also did mention some things in there concerning some part of um the basic edits or either in photoshop things you like to learn so let me know that if you're interested the comment section is there let me know all that and i know you guys will be interested in these particular videos i did mention when i was talking about this particular edit don't forget to subscribe to my channel like i mentioned earlier don't forget to turn on that bell notification icon to get notified when i drop a new content here on my youtube channel and if you're new here this channel is all of it's full of learning and learning and learning and practicing and learning i won't tell you that you can be good overnight but you need to constantly learn and practice learn and practice i myself i'm learning and practicing and before i end this video i'll tell you this don't stop learning don't stop practicing because with these two things in mind you can become consistent with whatever it is you're doing as a photographer and you can get whatever it is you want to get from the photography industry or the photography business and i think we can all progress in life and be good at what we do thank you so much for joining in on this video don't forget to subscribe don't forget to turn on the bell notification icon and also don't forget to share this particular video i really want you guys to share it and i'll see you in my next video thank you so much a peace